I'm here to tell you about tomorrow. And the way I see tomorrow is that it needs to be energy neutral. And I'm not alone. I work with uh, more than 50 different pe people at Fizi. Uh, it's a company uh, that develops different kinds of technology to make our tomorrow energy neutral. How we do that, I'm going to share with you a little bit of history uh, and also a little bit of future today, uh, but it will all be around biomimetic inspired artificial intelligence to redesign buildings. So first of all, what is biomimicry? Biomimicry is the emulation of the models, systems, elements of nature for the purpose of solving complex human problems. So I don't know if you've heard of, heard of biomimicry, but you see it a lot in materials. For example, here you see a leaf of a plant, which actually um, um, is hydrophobic. So it will, um, uh, when rain falls on it, the rain will smoothly slip away from the plant or the, the uh, and this material technology is integrated in modern day technologies. So we learn from nature and we apply it into technology. And we've been doing that in buildings for a very, very, very long time. Let's take you back to the first building ever made. This was in the Neolithic age. It's also known as the Stone Age. And during that time, people used mammoth bones. But with the mammoth, I'm not meaning um, using nature. No, they looked at cave structures. And they looked at the earth and they learned from cave structures and they rebuilt cave structures. And that's how the first buildings actually ever came to realization. We learned from nature. Time passed. And in Egypt, we had the ancient Egypts, pharaohs, and they were also inspired by nature. They were inspired by our solar system and they were building structures that simulated sunlight coming through the clouds and they were building towards the sunlight. So inspired and motivated by nature, we built amazing buildings. Um, and also during the Roman Empire, we were still inspired by nature. It was the first time ever we started using water wheels and sawmills. So we used the natural forces to help us build beautiful buildings. Unfortunately, in the 20th century, after the second industrial Re revolution, steel and glass accelerated the building industry. And it made us forget about nature. If you look at this horizon, it's a lot of gray, it's a lot of glass, it's a lot of steel. And you wouldn't expect this slide of me because we focus on glass. But if I look at our cities, I see the negative effect it has gotten on our horizon. And I also see that we have gotten lost and we do not look at nature en enough anymore. Of course, there are exceptions. Uh, this is a keynote for a Milan presentation. So, of course, I cannot uh, leave Bosco Verticali out of this uh, uh, presentation. There are exceptions everywhere. But let's not focus on exceptions. Let's focus on reality. And let's focus on also the possibilities. And what we see at our company in the future of buildings is that we start combining two things. Because technology and nature. And how? Because the fourth industrial revolution, which is actually taking place right now, is enabling all new kinds of possibilities. By connecting modern day systems and powering with natural resources, a really a new horizon sets the stage. And this might seem complicated, and it is complicated, but I'm going to tell you how it will be possible. So first of all, these are the two things at Fizi we want to combine. Deep tech, so technologies that really, really need significant development time, intellectual property and efforts by big teams and nature, something I do not have to describe to all of you. And if we combine these two things, and that's what we did, we developed smart skin. Smart skin is smart because it uses deep tech and it has a skin taken out of nature. 
what is it exactly? Well, what it is exactly is that we integrate sensors and solar into Windows to enable artificial intelligent building control. And then we use that artificial intelligent building control to reduce the energy consumption up to 30% of a total building. So that might sound uh, 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 like a lot of different new meanings to you, but the thing that I want to highlight is that it's possible to use data that you gather in a smart and efficient way to reduce the energy footprint of a building with 30%. How do we do it? We install smart windows on the entire building. And in these smart windows, we have integrated solar and sensors. And as an addition to the smart windows, we are building on our model predictive control system, which is an algorithm that is focused on uh, increasing the energy efficiency of buildings while, and as a very important factor, at the same time, significantly improving building comfort. To give you an idea how it works, here you see a couple of people working in the office and they can focus on their work while at the same time, our sensing modules in the glass, but also in the rest of the uh, office environment, our power bars are measuring outside weather uh, conditions and inside climate conditions. And there you're using, for example, the amount of heat that comes into the office to naturally heat the office once that is desired. But when an office needs to be cooled, we automatically lower the sun blinds and keep out with a reflective uh, layer on the sun blinds, we keep out as much of the sunlight as possible. In that way, you get a skin for your building that starts to breathe, that starts to dynamically respond onto the environment and keeps the most balance in between the indoor and outdoor climate. And this not only goes for sunlight or sun shading, it can also go for ventilation. If our windows or facade measures that inside air quality is low and outside air quality is high, ventilation shafts can be opened automatically or windows can be opened and closed. Our goal is that people can continue to work or live or relax or sleep while the artificial intelligence system is controlling in the most efficient way um, uh, the, the building climate control. We deliver uh, dashboards I've shown on the right side, for example, for one of our customers, we show them how much we are balancing the energy system, but we also can show them how much solar energy is being used. We can show them what it does compared to uh, uh, households or trips. So we are also, not, we're not installing tech just in the facade. We're also making it tangible, visible for building owners or users. Because we want people to relax, focus and enjoy well, the skin, uh, sorry, I got a call in between. While the skin of the building thinks, acts, and improves the climate for them. And here you see one of the buildings, so it's a render where we add our layer of glass to the building, um, uh, and that starts to act as a skin. And this might sound like a technology of the future. It might sound new and complex and a lot of risks should be involved, but it's not. We've been already installing this very successfully in residential product, uh, projects, in office projects, in retrofits, in new builds. This technology is live and um, it is actually already alive for a while. And um, we now are expanding with our technology uh, outside the Netherlands, uh, looking for architects and real estate developers that want to build buildings that know and learn and are aware of the environment they are in. We want to change the perspective. And we want to change that perspective with our technology, but we want you as architects, as real estate developers, as building owners, or as just supporters of uh, uh, the energy transition to join us in a mission to change the perspective. Thank you very much for listening.